Good morning guys, welcome back. We are gonna start the final teardown of the 27D. We've gotta get all of the shift rail assembly out, the sliding gears out, the drive chains, the sprockets. And these sprockets are different than the ones in the 28. I'll, uh, I'll explain that when we get to them. But we'll get the sprockets off, get the axles out, and then the differential assembly and then last will be the bottom shaft with the reverse idler. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I don't have much time. <clears throat> and if possible, I'd like to get at least halfway through this in this video. Um, again, we covered a lot of this in tearing down the 28D. So I'm gonna try to go quick, but also film as much as I can so you guys don't miss anything. But I'm still sick, it's been well, basically since Rolog, so Labor Day weekend, I've been sick pretty much the whole time, but it's probably because, because I'm working a lot. You know, I did almost 80 hours this last week, so yeah. <clears throat> Anyhow, let's jump right in. We'll start with the shifting lever, shift forks and rail, and then um, the sliding gear shaft assembly. Actually, I think if I remember correctly, we got to remove the axles and differential before we can take the sliding gear shaft out. So let's get started. Okay. Go ahead and get started here. <clears throat> first things first, I'm going to cut all the safety wire. I did spray all this stuff down with degreaser over the last few days. Every night when I got home from work, I'd spray it down and then I uh, tried spraying everything with hot water here this morning, but it seems like I probably should have just left it alone because now it's oily greasy instead of sludgy greasy, if that makes sense. Another one over here. Well, let's get this one out first. the shift rail out. Have to get a my brass hammer to pound that up, get it loosened up here. Okay, shift rail fork is out, remove the key, I'm going to have to probably go this way though. Okay, help me out here.
spring key. Now, let's hope. We got a cotter pin on the back side here that kind of centers the rear spring. So we'll move that cotter pin and we should be able to sh slide that shaft out of there. Right here. I just brought the trash can right in so that I can dump everything into the trash. Okay. Shift rail is out. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off. There's a lot of extra crud on it. Okay, I think the next thing will be the actual shift rail with the forks. So there's a bolt here and behind it there's a threaded plug. So I'll have to get a screwdriver or a pick to clean this out, but there's there's actually a, a cross cut in there for a large screwdriver so you can remove that plug. Okay. Springs out of the shift rails, detent springs, or shift forks I should say. <clears throat> Detents. There we go. So, should be able to drive this shaft out of this side, but we first have to remove. There's a lock bolt right here with a jam nut. First have to remove that. <clears throat> Not sure. Probably move the camera back a ways. Should be good enough. See, now what I really need is a parts washer so that I can clean all this stuff. I'll probably invest in one not too far from now. I've just resulted to buckets and E85, diesel fuel, things like that to clean things up, but a parts washer would really be helpful. <laughs> so I'll have to invest in one of those just for this project, I think. Because these things are quite greasy. Now I'll get a punch. And a 
hammer, we'll start driving that shaft. Shouldn't take much. So we're clear of the first fork. We can go ahead and bring that out. And I think we can probably pull it out the rest of the way by hand. Oh yeah, no problem. Shaft is out, second fork is out. Now I like to put them on exactly the way they came off. <clears throat> that way there's no confusion. Put the lock bolt back in place loosely. Okay, moving on. Okay guys, well we got the sprockets and drive chains out. Those chains fought me for at least an hour. But one of the major differences, two major differences between the 27 and the 28D is the 27D has much larger sprockets with kind of a spoke design. But the 27D had a 465 cubic inch engine the 28 was a 501 cubic inch. So I think obviously they they geared the 27s down as far as sprockets go. Larger sprockets will make less effort for the engine to pull more weight. So what I think we're going to do is probably use the 28D sprockets and chains. Um, we found that these chains are missing rollers or the central portion of the roller. This sleeve here that goes on top of the shaft of the link, um, the chains were missing two of those. So they were broken and I found them in the bottom of the sump of the, of the rear case. So we'll have to, um, we'll have to make sure that the sprockets indeed will interchange on the axles. I'm not even sure if I'm going to use these axles or the ones out of the 28. I've yet to inspect them, check the bearings. we got to disassemble the axles from the housings and check everything over. But we got to do that with the 28D stuff too. Pick the best of both worlds. And then uh, start with reassembly on those things after we clean them. But we're going to go ahead and get this strapped up. I don't have a whole lot of time left, but if I can get this strapped up and hopefully I can get this out without removing the axles. I haven't loosened up and, you know, removed the axles yet, but if I can get this out first, that means I can take this out. So yeah, let's see if I can get that out. We'll, <laughs> we'll give it a shot. I don't know. I'm I'm thinking I'm I got to take out the axle housings first because this has to tilt and twist and to get it out of here. So I'll be right back with you once we get set up. Okay, guys. Well, it's a couple days later, but I had to get as much as I could done done. So I do apologize for not filming um pulling the differential out and the reverse idler, but we covered that in the 1928D video. Um, I'm trying to get this thing disassembled, which it is now, and then cleaned out before, well, before Saturday, and today is Wednesday, <clears throat> because we are gonna get some cold temperatures and I don't know if it's gonna come back up. Um, Halloween is next Tuesday, and I mean, they're talking snow possible over the next couple few days here. It's probably not going to accumulate too much, but you never know. So temperatures are 
going to be in the low 20s and even the upper teens here. So you just never know. Um, we've got to do a lot of work and cleaning stuff up. Um, in regards to the rear sprockets, there were three different size rear sprockets offered for these, which number one, either increased or decreased ground speed, but the taller sprockets or the lower geared sprockets, I'll, I'll say, would get, give you more of a power to ground ratio because you'd have better torque being applied with larger sprockets, similar to like if you've ever ridden a mountain bike with the different gearing, the larger gear in the rear with the smaller gear up front will give you the most power to ground. So if you were climbing a hill, you would shift into the larger gear in the rear, smaller gear on the front, and that would enable you to climb the, the hill with less effort. So same would apply to these tractors. Also, something I noticed, and I got kind of excited for a second, is the rear case is a D670RX. Now, the X caught me off guard. I thought, okay, this might be an experimental rear case for something, but that's not the case. Um, the 28 does not have an X on it, but from what I've gathered from some other D collectors is the X means that it's a heavy duty rear casting. So that's kind of cool. <clears throat> but um, I'm probably gonna end up using the smaller rear sprockets and drive chains to give us a little bit better ground speed. So these larger rear sprockets will likely be for sale. Uh, these two drive chains are the ones that came out of the 27. So my guess is they have more links in them than the smaller sprockets. So these are gonna go for sale as well, but they also have, here are two of the roller collars or the link collars that I dug out of the bottom of the sludge in the rear case. So it's, it's missing two of those on one of the chains. But other than that, they're in great shape. So we do have to inspect the differential assembly, make sure that isn't cracked like the other one, like the one out of the 28. So hopefully there's no cracks in that. And, oh. We ran to get a parts washer. Got this from Harbor Freight. Seems pretty decent. It claims to hold 20 gallons, but I'm gonna say it's probably closer to 10 gallons. I've got five gallons of mineral spirits I'm gonna put in here and then we'll put it, we'll fill it the rest of the way with uh, diesel fuel. I've got some gloves coming and I've got uh, brush coming to help scrub. I've got a variety of brushes here, but I figured I'd order um, a stiff bristled wood handled brush for for this, but it seems seems pretty nice. It's fairly heavy duty, so yeah, <clears throat> that should help a lot in cleaning parts. So anyhow, that's going to do it for this episode. I'm sorry I didn't have a whole lot of stuff that was included, but again, I was just trying to get as much done as I could. I wanted to get this completely tore down and ready for cleaning. I have a friend, uh, Sean Jacobson, the, the gentleman I posted all the steam engine videos a week ago. We were over at his place and he's got a hot water pressure washer. So hopefully we can get this thing pressure washed with that hot water pressure washer get all the crud out of it and then from there we're just going to start cleaning the smaller parts start inspecting uh, we got to get a bunch of gasket material check out the bearings on everything there's not really a whole lot of bearings in this i did notice that the reverse idler from the 27 is very loose the bushings inside this gear are very loose on the shaft so we're going to have to take a close look at that compare it to the 28 reverse idler and go from there but that's gonna do it guys uh thanks for watching and wrenching with me hope you enjoyed and we'll see you in the next one